Canola is the third most important crop in Australia's southern grain growing region, which ensured it was addressed at the GRDC's Adelaide Grains Research Update. Andrew Ware, former South Australian Research and Development Institute scientist, gave a presentation on the recently concluded Optimised Canola Profitability Project, highlighting the 10 key lessons for improved yields and grower returns. The first lesson of the 10 is crop planning and preparation. This is really where you set up um, growing a profitable canola crop. Um, there were a couple of key factors that we found that you need to get right, right from the start. Those key factors were understanding um, the nitrogen status and the soil water status of the soil before you start the season. So one of the key things to do with nitrogen, and this is backed up with all our experiments, is that you need about 80 kilos of nitrogen for every tonne of grain that you produce. So this is, this is the challenge for, for you guys, is how you set that target yield. You know, if you're, if you're using a 20 to 25 kilograms per millimetre of rainfall to convert um, uh, wheat yield, canola should be equivalent, should be about 14. Setting that um, target yield is the key to, to starting your nitrogen decision making process. What we found was that, it, that the timing wasn't all that critical in the decision making process. Rate, rate is king, so as long as you know how much yield you're shooting for, work out the 80 kilos, that's, that's the key thing. So we typically found in the lower rainfall environments, going earlier is better, just because you get that more opportunity to get the nitrogen into the plant and convert that into yield. So it's really important to understand how much nitrogen you've got going into the, going into the season. The other thing is stored water. And I've, I've used an example from Northern New South Wales, or Western New South Wales, because it's, they do rely so much on stored water. So this is from Condobolin. And so what we're saying here is that this is in a 20, if you have 20 mils of stored moisture in an environment like Condobulin and there's no reason to think that any other environment is any different, the response you're going to get from having that stored water is, is just the same. You're going from a 0.6 tonne, which is probably not going to be financially viable, but if you know you've got 40 mils sitting in the soil, you bump that yield up by nearly half a tonne. So my second lesson is variety selection. So there's three parts of this. The first of them is herbicide tolerance and understanding, yeah, we've got a, a, variety, a range of herbicide tolerance that we've got available to us in the different canola varieties we currently grow in Australia. Um, understanding or having access to varieties that have got particularly clear field tolerance is a big help, particularly in South Australia, where we've got a lot of clear field herbicides being used within um, lentil productions as well as cereal production. So that helps us manage some of those residues. The second factor is, is deciding whether you should be employing a, a hybrid versus an open pollinated type of technology. The hybrid varieties that we've got available to us at the moment have really superseded the yields of those open, older open pollinated varieties. And the third thing, and, the, and this will, will expand on this further, is understanding the phenology of the variety. That brings me to lesson three, matching variety phenology to sowing time. So as part of this project, we've, we've spent a lot of time working out how different varieties develop in different environments. And we've also spent some time working out when the key stress periods are for canola in particular environments. So we want to make sure that canola is flowering in an environment when it's not too frosty, too hot or too drought. Uh, water limited and we want to be able to use a variety that uses as much of that growing season as possible. So matching the variety to the variety sowing time to the um, flowering window is a really critical part of the package. So lesson four is sowing a slow spring variety in late March to uh, mid-April. The examples that we used a lot in this project were Archer and Wahoo. This is just um, using Yolana data right across, across the few years that we ran the, these experiments. You can see that if you sow these in the first half of April, they yield really well. But if you sow them um, compared to a mid variety, so we're talking 44Y90 type variety, if you sow them in early May, they don't yield anywhere near as well. 
So lesson five is sowing a mid-season canola from the middle of April to early May. This is the bread and butter of the South Australian canola uh, industry. It's, we tend to sow a lot of mid-season varieties. And what this project has done is to really understand, cat help categorise where those what those varieties are and where they fit. This just goes to show, this is a, an example from Lamaru. You can sow these things pretty much from the middle of April through to early May. You seem to get a yield advantage. They're really well adapted to South Australian conditions. The majority of the breaks to the season occur in the South Australian environment, somewhere within that late uh, uh, yeah, mid-April to early May window. Um, and having the varieties available to capitalise on that is key. Being able to sow as early as you can in that window lets you flower in that optimal time and maximise yield. So lesson six of my 10 is, is about the fast spring varieties. If you sow a fast spring too early, we found that that was quite deleterious to yield. So if you sow a fast spring variety, say even around Anzac Day or earlier, a fraction earlier, they can race through their development and start flowering even into late June which puts them at risk of frost and it also means that their biomass production is quite low and they don't tend to be able to maximise their yield. However, if you do so, a far, if you've got a fast spring variety, they can be quite useful in, the, in a late break to the season and they are also really well suited to that early to mid-May type of sowing window. So lesson seven is applying post-season nutrition as required. The the biggest driver of post-sowing nutrition in canola is nitrogen. Nitrogen we found throughout the, the life of this project was, was a key driver of yield. Even with, um, without too many big variations in the way that we're applying the nitrogen, we can target inputs to match what the canola needs and improve the upside in terms of gross margin. So lesson eight is, is understanding the critical growth period. We did a series of experiments as part of this project where we, we actually imposed some stress on the crop at different times throughout the growing season. We ran some shade cloth out across, the, across trials as the crop was starting to flower. And we shifted this, the shade around the trial, depending every, what we're calling every 100 degree days, which is about a week in spring. And what we found was that if you impose a stress, um, what we're calling 300 degree days, so maybe three weeks after the, first, after the start of flowering, we saw a massive effect on yield. Yield was reduced 40% by 40% when there's a stress in this critical period. So the other point when you're in this critical period is to be able to optimise water, water availability and nitrogen availability. There's possibly not a lot that we can do about water availability other than understanding the status of the soil right from the right at the start of the season. But nitrogen, making sure that the crop has got access to enough nitrogen in that period just after we start flowering is a really key strategy to be able to, to help maximise our canola yields. Lesson nine is harvest management. So, Harvest management is, is um, in this sense, relates to windrow timing. When we started this project, we, a lot of the industry advice was that, that windrow timing was driven when 60% of the grain on the main stem had changed colour from green to either red, brown or black. What we found quite quickly through this project is that 80% of the grain is coming from the branches not the main stem. And the grain on the branches was maturing about a week slower, give or take, than the, the grain on the main stem. And the work that was done as part of this project found that if you windrowed a crop at the start of seed colour change, your yield was drastically, even yield was even 50% lower than if you had waited until the optimal seed colour change. So the recommendation to industry now is to 
windrow when 60% of the seed has changed colour from a selection of pods selected from the mid part of the plant from, that were selected from both the main and the branches of the plant. And a, a reasonable portion of those need to be from the, from the branches because they contribute mostly to the yield. So the final lesson, lesson number 10, evaluating the financial performance. GRDC asked us to do a survey of advisors on, on their perceptions of what they've got out of the project. The people that responded to this survey were suggesting was that by getting sowing date right, bringing it earlier, that was giving an improvement of $49.50 on a gross margin. If we match the right variety to, to hit that flowering window, that was giving us another 18. The biggest bang for our buck, the growers and advisors that were surveyed, were suggesting getting nitrogen management right. $116 a hectare, getting that right. Choice of technology. We've seen a big drop off in terms of in the Australian crop in terms of how much OPTT is being grown. A lot more now growing to hybrids. So that gave it an increase in gross margin of $35. And the last one, windrow timing, $33 there by getting windrow timing right. So canola is the third most important crop in the southern region, both in terms of area and the production. Um, but also it's Having said that, it's a very risky crop because it's, it's a high input crop to grow. Um, and what we've done as part of this project is to be able to provide growers and advisors with information on, on helping to alleviate some of those risks, understand how much those risks can, call, can cost their business if they're not managed properly. So this project will be able to help um, growers become more profitable in the way that they grow canola and, and hopefully reduce the risk in growing it as well. Andrew Ware from Air Peninsula Ag Research. And for even more tips for profitable canola, search GRDC's online publications. This video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.